Hello everyone and welcome to Uncivil Law. Today we're dealing with a 34 foot tall cross that is on public land and whether or not it qualifies as establishment of religion under the First Amendment. This is the case of Amanda Kodarifov, which I'm sorry I mispronounced that one, versus the city of Pensacola. In this case, Amanda, as I will refer to her from here on out, is suing the city of Pensacola because they have a really tall cross on public land that they're maintaining. The question is, is this establishment of religion? Let's read this case and see what it has to say. Bourbon? Bourbon has cider in it? Bourbon does not have cider in it. Who? What? What are you talking about? Bourbon does not. Bourbon has cider in it? No. No, absolutely not. I can almost quote you like what bourbon is off the top of my head, but not quite because I don't quite remember all the rules. But to be bourbon, it has to be 51% corn mash. It has to be uh, aged in new uh, white oak. It has to be bottled at not less than 80 proof. It has to be made in the United States, not just made. Some people say made in Kentucky, but that's wrong. I've read the federal statutes, I assure you. Anywhere in the United States will be fine. And then there's some other rules, like when it has to be distilled at a certain proof and like something else. And also it has to be aged for at least two years to be called straight bourbon. But those are the rules. Bourbon does not have cider in it. It doesn't have apples in it at all. I'm sure there's some that have apple flavors or whatever, but bourbon by definition is everything I just said. I'm a bourbon expert. Don't at me. Don't at me. I'm serious about my bourbon, guys. And it is mostly made in Kentucky. Jacob is right about that. Last time I checked, it was like 95% plus. So yeah, it is mostly made in Kentucky. Yes. But not exclusively. Bourbon can be made anywhere in the United States and be called bourbon. But not from other countries. America only. USA. USA. The barrel thing has changed? Really? Um, If it has in the CFR, I'd be amazed. But if you can find me evidence of that, Dave, I'd be amazed. But okay. Let me know. This is Pensacola Cross Case 2.0. In, in September 2018, relying on an earlier decision, we affirmed the district court decision ordering the removal of a Latin cross from the city of Pensacola Bayview Park on the ground the city's maintenance of the cross violated the First Amendment. So we previously said, you have to remove this. But then things happened. The city subsequently filed a petition for cert with the U.S. Supreme Court. While that was pending, the United States Supreme Court decided another case, holding the 32-foot cross on public land in that case did not violate the Establishment Clause. The following week, the Supreme Court granted the city's petition for certiorari, in this case, vacated and remanded. So the district court said remove it. The Court of Appeals said remove it. But then they petitioned for cert, and in another case, the Supreme Court said don't remove that cross, and said go figure out what we want you to do here. So now we have to figure it out. Do we have to remove this cross or not? Best, buff, best bourbon is from Buffalo Trace. It's a good bourbon. I don't know if I qualify as the best. My personal favorite bourbon is Four Roses, which I don't actually have any of on stock right now. But that's my favorite is uh, Four Roses. So uh, Buffalo Trace makes some good bourbon. I think Pappy is vastly overrated. Um, but their standard stuff is fine. It's good bourbon. Um, but I don't think it's the best. So, you know, Knob Creek, I th Knob Creek I like better than um, Buffalo Trace. I agree with that. Having carefully reviewed the United States Supreme Court opinion in American Legion, one of one or more of the opinions, because there are seven of them, and having considered the party's supplemental briefing fee, we now hold that we're bound by a prior case to conclude the plans have Article Three standing, but that American Legion abrogates our prior case law to the extent the latter disregard evidence of historical acceptance and instead applied the lemon test, a much beleaguered, often criticized lemon test. And further, that where American Legion rather than Rubin applied, the cross does not violate the Establishment Clause. So, you know, we got we got owned by the U.S. Supreme Court, and we're now going to reverse our decision because we got owned. Fair enough. The facts underlying our case, of course, remain unchanged. In 1941, the National Youth Administration erected the wooden cross in the eastern corner of Pensacola Bayview Park to be the focal point of what would become an annual Eastern Sunrise Program. The program itself was organized by the Pensacola Junior Chamber of Commerce, otherwise known as the JCs, awesome, and soon became a tradition with people gathering for Easter service during World War II to pray for, among other things, the divine guidance of leaders and for faith to see through the dark days of war. In 1969, they replaced the original wooden cross with the 34 concrete version at issue in this case. The new cross was dedicated 
at the 29th annual Eastern Sunrise Service. The JCs later donated the cross to the city, which continues to light and maintain it for $233 a year. So we're, we're assuming over $233 a year, which, you know, on the one hand, any amount is a violation of the Establishment Clause, but on the other amount, $233. Like, do we care? Apparently we do. Although the cross is only one of more than 170 monuments scattered throughout the Pensacola Parks, it is one of only two and the only religious display located in Bayview Park. The Bayview Park Cross, in, in one iteration or another, stood in the same location for 75 years, essentially without incident, before the plants, in this case, filed suit asserting the claim cross violates the First Amendment Clause, First Amendment, First Amendment Establishment Clause. While the city's petition was pending, the Supreme Court decided American Legion versus American Humanist, holding, as already noted, the 32-foot-tall Latin cross on public land in Blandenburg, Maryland, does not violate the Establishment Clause. We'll take a deeper dive later, but for present purposes, it's sufficient to say American Legion did two different things. First, as we'll explain, it jettisoned the lemon test, at least for cases involving religious references or imagery in public monuments, symbols, mottos, displays, and ceremonies in favor of an approach that focuses on particular issue at hand and looks for history for guidance. I need to establish a P.O. box so you guys can send me liquor or a forwarding box or something. So if you guys want, if you guys want to send me liquor, let me know. Or, or you could just super chat me the relevant amount of money and say, buy this bourbon. That would also be acceptable. Second, informed by four considerations, which again, we'll explore in greater detail, the Supreme Court adopted what it would call a strong presumption of constitutionality for established religious expressive monuments, symbols, and practices. The court described the pertinent considerations as follows. Identifying the original purpose or purposes of the monument. As time goes by, the purposes may multiply. Mail mailing liquor is not in and of itself a crime, depending on the relevant jurisdiction. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a crime to put it in the postal mail either, but, you know, it's a general no. The question here, therefore, is whether the city's maintenance of Bayview Var constitutes a prohibited establishment of religion. So the issue is whether or not, because it's owned, maintained by the city, whether or not it's establishment of religion to have this cross, this very large cross in Pensacola, Florida. Let's read on. We won't bury the lead. Having reconsidered this case in light of American Legion, we conclude the Supreme Court's decision abrogates Robin's analysis and holding with respect to the merits, and that when American Legion is applied, Pensacola's maintenance does not violate the First Amendment. So this particular cross does not violate the Establishment Clause because of the test set forth in American Legion. But American Legion was complicated, so now the court has to figure out what the Supreme Court actually said, which some cases is more complicated than others, and this would be one of them. Candidly, and respectively, divining any sort of clear rule from the seven separate opinions in American Legion is a challenge. But at least as it pertains to the continuing validity of the Establishment Clause holding an analysis, and thus our own earlier Robin-based decisions that Bayview Park violated the First Amendment, American Legion makes two things clear. Lemon, and its much maligned three-part test, no longer govern the Establishment Clause as it relates to the monuments and displays. Yeah, the lemon, the lemon test is just like, it is not well under, it is not well tolerated. The Supreme Court has never really explicitly overruled it, but they really should just because it's been so like maligned and so whatever. It's like, it doesn't govern anything anymore. Like, it's just like, you know, it's just pointless. So let's, let's get rid of the lemon test. You know, it's just not doing anything for us anymore. We'll, we'll come up with something else. And the history and tradition plays an important role. For reasons we'll explain, these two related aspects of American Legion gut the merits analysis and thus fatally undermine the lone precedent that drove our initial decision. For the present purposes, perhaps American Legion's clearest message is this. The lemon test is dead. Well, sort of. It's dead, that is, at least with respect to cases involving religious display and monuments, including crosses. We count six clear votes for that proposition. So as I was sort of alluding to a little bit earlier, sometimes Supreme Court decisions can be a little bit harder than other Supreme Court decisions. You know, the ones that we like as lawyers, the ones we like are the ones where we get a decision that has five votes. You know, it's real clear. It's real easy. We just go do what that says. Real easy. But unfortunately, not all decisions are like that. Some dis decisions are really fractured and they have lots of different opinions. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what the majority opinion is. And sometimes it's a pain in the butt. And then the courts have to like figure out, okay, 
where are the votes for what and what did the Supreme Court say and why didn't they just put this in the opinion with five votes? We don't know. Well, now it's up to us to try to figure out what they want. So now we have to go actually count votes and we're counting to six. That's the number we came to. So that's what we're going to say six people said. So, okay, fine. Some decisions from the Supreme Court leave a little bit to be decided, decided in terms of the operational clarity. Another thing that makes American Legion reasonably clear is a history and tradition that plays a crucial role in the Establishment Clause analysis. At this point, we have five because, again, we have to count because, you know, Supreme Court doesn't like to always write them in a clarity. We have five votes. Justice Alito plus Justice Roberts and Kagan, Breyer, and Kavanaugh have agreed as a general matter that courts considering Establishment Clause challenges should at least look for history as guidance. And perhaps more importantly for the disposition of our case, we have the same five agreeing that established relig religious display or monument is entitled to formal presumption of constitutionality. What does this all mean for Rabin and our own early reliance on Rabin to invalidate the cross? In short, we think it means that Rabin's Establishment Clause analysis no longer controls, and we must assess the cross's constitutionality afresh under American Legion. As we explained in our initial opinion, the panel in Rabin applied the lemon test and rejected historical practice as a reliable guide for the Establishment Clause. In stark contrast, the Supreme Court of American Legion made clear that Lemon does not apply in this religious display and that history and tradition matter. So basically, we had the law completely backwards. You know, we said that we should apply Lemon and history doesn't matter. The Supreme Court says you shouldn't apply Lemon and history doesn't matter. Supreme Court wins, man. Supreme Court wins. When we apply American Legion rather than Rabin, we conclude the Bayview Park Cross did not violate the Establishment Clause. Explaining why will require a bit of explaining, because the Supreme Court is a little bit complicated on this. Applying American Legion is, as you probably already sensed, easier said than done. The Supreme Court's splinter decision spans more than 80 slip opinion pages and constitutes seven different writings. But several principles do emerge. Perhaps the clearest, alongside Lemon's inapplicability to display cases and history and tra tradition significance, is that established religious monuments and displays are entitled to a presumption of constitutionality. So if it's been there for a long time, let it be. Let it be. Far less clear from American Legion, but just as important to our consideration of Bayview Park's constitutionality is exactly how and whether this strong presumption arises and whether it can be rebutted. We then turn to these cases. Yes, so like... How does it arise and how do you rebut it? Good question. Let's figure it out. First, how does the presumption of constitutionality arise? In embracing the presumption, the Supreme Court highlighted four considerations, which is said demonstrate that retaining established religiously expressive monuments, symbols, and practices is quite different from erecting or adopting new ones. So yes, age matters in this context. To recap, those considerations are as follows. That identifying the original purpose or purposes of the established monument may be difficult. We're not sure why it was there. That as time goes on, the purposes associated with a monument may multiply. So even if we know why it was there originally, if the reason it's still there has changed. The message conveyed by the monument may have changed. You know, what it means has changed over time. And when time passage imbues a monument with familiarity, removing it may not be neutral anymore. So like, yeah, as it's been long and established, it may look hostile rather than neutral. Fair enough. The trick is the Supreme Court's opinion sends mixed messages about whether and to what extent the four considerations inform operation of the presumption. In particular, it's not clear whether, by articulating the four considerations, the court intended to apply, explain how and why it reached its conclusion that the presumption should apply, or instead prescribe a list of prerequisites that must be explained. So was the, was the Supreme Court simply saying, this is the reason we've come to in this particular case? Were they saying a list of, a list of factors? This is a factor test? You know, what are these what are these things exactly? Are they just reasons we came to this decision or a list of factors? If the considerations were just steps in the analysis, the presumption will rise simply by virtue of the established ness. So like if if the if these were just like kind of musings along the way, then like all that matters is it's established. But on the other hand, if the considerations impose mandatory conditions or prerequisites, then the presumption would seemingly arise only where all or the balance of the four considerations apply. So was this like Musing along the way, was this a four factor test? If so, is it a balanced test? Are all the factors necessary? Is it a balance of factors? You know, we don't we, we don't quite know what you want in Supreme Court, and we're not we're not hundred percent sure. Hence the question that confronts us does the presumption apply categorically, without exception, to all established monuments? So like were these just musings along the way where it's like, okay, anything established, we're done. 
categorical. These were just kind of musings that don't really matter. Dicta, essentially, or to those particular monuments that meet the four considerations. Our answer, we don't know. We don't know. Happily, we need not resolve it because either way we conclude the presumption applies. So, oh, thank God, we don't need to figure it out. So, we're not sure what the Supreme Court wanted. Any established thing? Or do you want this as a four-part test? And if you want it as a four-part test, do you have to meet all the factors? Is it a balancing thing? What are we doing here? In the case Freedom from Religion Foundation versus the County of Lehigh, the Third Circuit recently opted for the first interpretation, holding American Legion's presumption of constitutionality categorically applies to all established religious tests as not necessary for the particular mon monument that satisfy all four considerations. Okay. Now, in fairness, there is also language in American Legion that cuts the other way towards the conclusion that in order to qualify for the presumption, a particular monument must satisfy, or at least the balance of them, the four considerations. For instance, the Supreme Court purported to apply these principles by which it seemed, question mark, I love it, to mean the considerations to hold the Blum's Bladenburg Cross did not violate the Establishment Clause. So it's like, yeah, we're, we're reading tea leaves. What, what, what do you want from us, Supreme Court? We're not quite sure. In short, we think there are two plausible readings of American Legion. One, which the city advocates and the Third Circuit adopted, would apply a presumption to any established religious monument. The other, which the plaintiff advocate, would apply a presumption only to monuments that satisfy the four considerations the Supreme Court highlighted. Fortunately, we need not choose between the two because it would satisfy the presumption attaches under either one. You know, with, with, without more, and this, I don't know what this says about my bias because I got three different options, right? I got three different options, right? So I got any established thing will do. It's a four-part test. You need to meet all four, or it's a four-part balancing test. So I'm not sure what it says about my biases one way or another, but in the absence of anything more, I would say four-part balancing test seems like the right answer. So like, you know, that all, you have to weigh them in balance. So I would not say per se categorical. I'd say, you know, it's rather the balance of the factors. So apparently I disagree with the Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, which said it was categorical. Apparently, I say no, it's actually a, a balancing test. So, me and the Second Circuit disagree, I guess. I, I don't know what that says about anything, but there we are. On the city and the Third Circuit's categorical interpretation, the Bayview Cross qualifies, the cross is established given its age, whether it's 50 or 75 years old, because it was replaced at one point. It's religiously expressive and it's monument or simple enough said. I, I like this man. It, this is this is this speaks to me and the kind of analysis I like. You know, just straight to the point. No muss, no fuss, fuss. We only say as much as we need, and we get to the end of the page. I like this. It very much appeals to me. Get to the end of the page. I don't need to go through lots of volumes of stuff that doesn't matter. Sometimes things matter, and sometimes they don't. Right? And this is an example where it doesn't matter. It's like we we can we can state we can state the we can state the issue rule analysis and conclusion all in one paragraph this is an amazing this is amazing wonderful use of brilliant writing right so law students everywhere will be familiar with the iraq method issue rule analysis conclusion right we can do all four in one paragraph right on the categorical interpretation it qualifies it's established it's religiously expressive and a monument symbol enough said we stated the issue you know, is it established? We say the rule, categorical. We say the analysis, it's there. Conclusion, enough said. We did all four in the space of one sentence. Love it. Although it takes a bit of unpacking, we're, all satisfi we're also satisfied the presumption attaches, even if American Legion's four considerations are necessary preconditions. First here is often the case with established monuments that identifying the original purpose is difficult. The record establishes that the National Youth Administration erected the wooden cross as part of an Easter Sunrise program. The original wooden cross was later replaced with the concrete version. And the JCs, which I still think is a great name, there donated across the city, but not much else. And to complicate the matters further, the difficulty of isolating the Bayview Park's cross original purpose is compounded by the fact there are three entities whose intentions might matter. The National Youth Administration, the JCs, and the city. If we were to assume the National Youth Administration and JCs had religious motives for erecting the cross, what in the city, which after all is the only state actor in the mix and that's the only cap entity capable of violating the First Amendment? Yeah, what was the city's motivation? Plaintiffs have not offered any mo meaningful evidence regarding the city's motivations, either for allowing the erection or for permitting its replacement or for accepting the donation. Without better evidence as to the city's original purpose, it'd be inappropriate for us to compel removal or terminate based on su superstition. Supposition.
So in short, even assuming that religious monument must satisfy the American Legion's four considerations, we conclude they're satisfied here and the presumption applies. So either way you slice it, the presumption attaches. Next question. Can the presumption be rebutted here? And if so, how? Unfortunately, we find even less guidance from American religion, religion about that. Amazing. The parties offer competing theories, which we'll consider in turn. Borrowing from the Third Circuit's analysis in Lehi, the city contends the only way the presumption can be overcome is by demonstrating discriminatory intent in the government's decision to maintain the monument or deliberate disrespect in the monument's design. As best we can tell, the quoted phrases appear to have been taken respectively from the introduction to American Legion's opinion and from a passing comment, comment in the opinion relating to the Bladenberg's cross status at the World War I Memorial. We aren't convinced the Supreme Court meant to take either or both of these isolated and unexpected references as the test for rebutting the presumption of constitutionality, but with so little to go on, we might as well consider them. In short, we agree with the city that, to the extent they are proper measures, the plaintiff have failed to demonstrate either discriminatory intent or deliberate disrespect in the monument's maintenance or design. First, the plaintiffs have provided no evidence of the sort of discriminatory intent that would warrant invalidating a presumptively constitutional monument. It's hard to imagine how the city could more convincingly demonstrate its commitment to neutrality than by allowing the cross for any purpose, including one of the complaining plaintiff's own satanic rituals. Second, plaintiffs offer no evidence of deliberate disrespect in the monument's design. There's nothing unique, let alone wholly disrespectful, about the Veyu Park cross. As American Legion itself explains, the cross is undoubtedly a Christian symbol, but it shouldn't blind us to everything else it represents. This does represent other things, right? Community, solidarity, you know, praying for soldiers, all kinds of good stuff. Praying for the Cerveza flu to end, all kinds of good stuff, yes. As to the plaintiff's first contention, as we just explained, American Legion itself demonstrates that it's undoubtedly a Christian symbol. In particular, a Latin cross may nevertheless pose no Establishment Clause concerns. Moreover, as we've explained, the Bayview Park cross's original purpose is entirely clear, as it has in any event multiplied and evolved over time. In other words, the plaintiff's blatant religious purpose, criterion for rebutting the presumption adds little, if anything, to the other considerations, which, on the own reading, informs the presumption's applicability in the first place. In sum, we're not convinced that either of the party's proposals was intended to be the test pursuant to which a plaintiff might seek to rebut the presumption that applies to establish religious monuments. The plaintiff's proposal, it seems to us, is hardly in square with American Legion itself. And if the city's proposal applies, we don't think the plaintiff has satisfied it. In either event, we find no basis for concluding the presumption of constitutionality has been overcome. Having reconsidered the case, in light of American Legion, we conclude, as the Supreme Court did there, the cross does not offend the Constitution. So that is the end of our coverage of the case of Amanda K. versus City of Pensacola. In this case, we learned that the City of Pensacola had a concrete cross that had been erected and had been there for quite some time. And initially, the District Court and the Court of Appeals ordered that it was removed. But there was an intervening case from the U.S. Supreme Court. And the U.S. Supreme Court said, no, no, you have to look at the history and the purpose and a whole bunch of other stuff. And then the Court of Appeals said, well, we're not quite sure exactly what you want us to do because it's a very fractionated opinion with a lot of different parts and we have to count votes. And you laid out these four things. Was that a four-part test? Are we supposed to find all four of those things as a weighting factor? Are we just supposed to find this established? What are we supposed to do here? But ultimately, the Court of Appeals decided it didn't matter. You know, it didn't matter which of those things they did, because no matter which way, it would come out the same way. And, you know, on balance, from what we can see, it seems to be true. You know, this, this cross had been there a long time, had been well-established, been used for other purposes, and the city had not discriminated against how people could use it, including for apparently satanic rituals. So if you want to do a satanic ritual and, and borrow the cross for that purpose, assuming that you don't, like, you know, interfere with the cross itself, because that wouldn't be allowed, but... If you want to, like, you know, get near it for your satanic cult, whatever, and apparently that's okay, so that's neutral. So, you know, there's no problem here. So the cross can remain because of the American Legion U.S. Supreme Court case, and that is the end of our analysis of this case. Thank you so much for being part of the Uncivil Law family. I appreciate your continued support. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, and you can also support us financially by clicking the applaud button below. Thank you so much for your contributions to our channel. It helps our work grow. Until later, cheers and goodbye.